Africa's about to get a new country. What? I thought the newest country we're slated for is known as Bougainville. There was a referendum all the way back in 2019. They should officially become their own state coming soon here. Apparently that's supposed to be official in 2027. So here in Africa has its own new thing coming up. That's pretty crazy. merge into a single nation called the East African Federation. Whoa, 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 what? I knew that was a thing. I didn't think that was actually for sure happening. You see these seven countries are about to merge into a single nation called the East African Federation. East African Federation. But I what have difference about that. does it make? First of all, this country would border both. Uh, hold up. Some fishy. Yeah, no, this is still a proposed plan. This is not for sure happening like the Bougainville I was talking about. I mean, even that is still like, I guess something could go wrong. But this is a legitimate proposed federal sovereign state consisting of these nations. Who knows if that'll actually go through, though? The idea has actually been around for a long time, 1960s. Apparently, though, COVID was one of the major factors that stopped the progress that these nations were making into becoming like one giant nation. The thing is, would all the other Indian world powers allow Ocean. this, like Russia, the USA, Europe, the EAF China, would cover around 4 it would be absolutely massive. With more than 300 million people, this country would be an economic powerhouse absolutely. attracting foreign interests. Uh, if they got to that point, then maybe things would go well. But who knows, it also could just be like the Yugoslavia of Africa. And just look at how that turned out in complete disaster. This continent really doesn't need to face more disasters like that. And yeah, let's, yeah. Crazy it could go coast to coast though, touching the Indian Ocean and Atlantic. Imagine like a rail system connecting the two. Africa is about to get a new country. No, it isn't. None of these countries are on board with this. Stop. You know how much those countries despise each other? Okay, maybe it really will be the Yugoslavia of Africa. It's crazy to see like all the people complaining in the comment section that this will never happen. Because this is like not even a quarter of the continent, yet at the very same time people were, were talking about like an African Union that could form and, you know, compete with the European Union. I mean, dang, if the middle part of Africa can't get along, then what's to say the entire continent of all 53 nations? nations would be able to do either. But then again, the AU might function like the EU, where each country is still its individual own thing. They There's just like an over body that manages more stuff. Probably Europe stranges borders, border and it's actually Europe. not that this strange border useless. around Belgium. I always think of that as Europe's strangest borders. Actually, it's gonna be hard to beat that, because this video is clearly not talking about that. This is a part of Belgian and Netherland territory, where it's like an enclave inside of an enclave inside of an enclave. Like, it's just a complete mess and uh, neighborhood. I don't know how you compete with this. But this let's go ahead and see. Between Finland Are we talking Oland here? Evenly divided by both countries. Market However, islands. in 1885, Finland wanted to build a lighthouse, so hmm. they naturally built it on the highest point of the island, not realizing ah. it was actually on the Swedish side. Oof. This little mistake would probably have meant another world war <laughs> if it were between countries like Greece and that Turkey. That is hilarious. However, this is Nordics yeah. we talking. They peacefully solved they're, they're, the situation they're, they're by drawing this weird border to once again equally divide the island. Mm. Is that the weirdest? in Europe though come on it's up there but no to be fair there is a question mark place there worst Nordic disagreement be like I love how the Nordic people always find a way to stay away from any conflicts like that this also reminds me of the Danish Canadian conflict it was literally known as the whiskey war for a second just for this barren rock they finally settled that after Russia invaded Ukraine in an effort to you know show that the world can be diplomatic and peaceful yeah this is still by far the strangest borders in Europe you can't beat it if it was by Mr. Geo nice Looking this is Greenland so confusing both We've talked about this don't before. Quite match with their names, but how did this happen? So let's yeah, the blame Vikings, the Vikings a little for this misunderstanding. You see, a Norse guy named Floki Vilger Darson wow, was he killed that pronunciation. Iceland, and during his journey, I actually don't even know. How would I know if he killed that pronunciation? It sounded like he did. Countered icebergs, so he named the island Iceland, uh, not knowing it was much greener. Then a guy who was accused of murder and exiled yes. from Iceland yep. moved to Greenland and named the island Greenland, so more people could come, yep. and settle, and inhabit. At the area. Yeah, pretty much nailed it as far as I know. And the funny thing is we still can't change it. And I'm assuming that's because like for centuries there, before we had access to, you know, what the world looked like, satellites, cell phones, internet. Like medieval peasants back in the day probably still thought that it was Greenland and Iceland because that's what the places represented. There was ice on Iceland and there was green on Greenland. It probably wasn't until just recently that a lot of people around the world realized that those names are inaccurate. I'm talking in the last like couple decades. I mean, I'm sure there's still a lot of Americans that don't realize Greenland is not green and Iceland is not icy. Because remember, Vikings first discovered Greenland over a thousand years ago, so that's crazy. They obviously discovered Iceland closer to them even earlier, so these names have been around for way too long at this point. We just gotta go with it. Map lad, did France Germany just get lucky in Firstly, World War II? France made the mistake of only fortifying the part that bordered Germany while yes. the north was left. Well, I mean, uh, it wasn't really a mistake. They did that on purpose. This is the Maginot Line. They wanted the 
Germans to go around because they thought that the Ardennes forest would stop them. That didn't happen. Moreover, the heavily forested region called the Ardennes was extremely there unfortified, since France believed Germany wouldn't dare invade through these forests and mountains anyways. And part of it is just like France's inability to predict where technology would go, how fast the German tanks would be, how their mobility in like rough terrain. Germany exploited the situation by launching invasion through Belgium and Ardennes, yes. which resulted in France's best armies being obliterated. Secondly, yes. France was less motivated for war right from the start as they had well, already yeah. won World War One. I. I mean, pretty much. Did Germany get lucky though? That's the title of the video. And I would say yes, but not because of that. A lot of historians believe that if the British and French immediately mobilized and invaded Germany while they were invading Poland in September 1939, they would have completely obliterated them. I mean, most of their forces were over here. If the Allied powers were just like, yeah, we're not going to have this and just exploded inside, the Germans would immediately be fighting a, a two-front war, an intense two-front war. I, I don't think this would have gone as well for them anymore. So did they get lucky? Because there was an eight-month phony war at the beginning of World War II? Yeah, I would say so. Did they think Germany would not invade Belgium while Germany literally invaded Belgium for World War One? Yeah, Belgium is just always being invaded for the World Wars. Hopefully not for World War Three, but I guess we'll see. It did help that the French and British militaries were still very behind the German military at the start of World War II. Nice job, Matt Blad, as always. There's literally nothing we can do. Speaking of Napoleon, these memes are obviously talking about, like, I guess looking back at the past, uh, a collapsing empire, depression, sadness, I don't know. This is a really interesting video. So this is Belgium at their height. I mean, they didn't control this territory at one moment in time, but they controlled a lot over time. And it's just like, well, let's watch the video. They had Indonesia. They lost. That was like one of the last things they, they lost. They were on Formosa uh, or modern day Taiwan now. They had parts of India. Parts of Sri Lanka, parts of South Africa, parts of just Africa in general. Remember, they made it to New York first. They lost that to the British. It was almost the, always the British that was taking this stuff away from them. They did make it to Brazil. Obviously, Portugal, I guess, ended up taking some stuff away from them too. But usually it was the British. They also discovered Australia, New Zealand first. They didn't put anything there. And then here, obviously, they, they used to be bigger, but then they, they lost some stuff down there. It's uh, it's an interesting perspective because generally speaking, like how well the Dutch did for their size in Europe being smashed between France and Germany, it's impressive. But this is a whole new perspective because in a way, like I don't really like to frame it like they just took consecutive L's. But dang, I think they lost so much when you when you put at it and you make it look like this. A little bit of this and a little bit of that uh, empire. Like, for instance, this is everything they ever got. But really, it was just the Dutch East Indies or Indonesia that made it till the 20th century. Well, that in Suriname, but eventually that became independent too. So there was New Netherlands in modern-day USA. They only had that till 1674. Some Virgin Islands and the rest of the areas in Latin America. There was a Dutch Brazil briefly there in 1654. And all these spots in Africa finally kicked out of South Africa in 1806. They were in India for quite some time, but eventually get kicked out there too. They had nice trading posts and good relations with Japan, but again, these are just trading posts. And then, yeah, at one point they had all of this. Still very impressive. I don't want to downplay what they were able to do, just again, considering their size. I like comparing the Dutch to the Portuguese. Similarly sized, I like how Portugal just went all in on Brazil. For the most part, they had more than just Brazil, but they really built up that one area. The Dutch were kind of like sprinkling things all around the world. Nice job. Syrian Patriot. Who's the father? No, I am your uh, father. I am your father? What? Wait, what? no, uh, I'm pregnant and you're Guys. the father. What? Uh, I mean, uh, you're pregnant and I'm the but, baby. What? <laughs> what? That's what I'm saying right now. What? You oofed my father. Oh, so Russia is saying this to the USA because we did oof the USSR. That's... That's their kind of father, basically. And I love that Britain shows up because they're they're basically our father in a way. USA being pregnant with, weirdly, I think, I mean, if we're the father and Russia's the mother, which they do say mother Russia, then our son is Alaska, right? The former Russian colony, Alaska. That obviously makes sense. I don't even know why the French are here. I mean, in the French, the French could be our mom and maybe the UK's our dad. Meanwhile, Poland and the Chinese kind of you know, more related possibly to, I don't know why I'm trying to turn geopolitics into family stuff. What the hell am I, let's just stop. UK, America, I'm your father. That's impossible! I mean, you're pregnant, and I'm the baby. Caught me off guard. Nice job, Bosnia Kingdom. I love that your channel banner is the Bosnian flag over German territory. That's, and Poland, I guess. When did your country last have access to the sea? A lot of countries obviously still have access to the sea. That's why they're blue, and it says 2024. The Swiss never had access to it. Obviously, Austria and Hungary last had access to it, well, the last year of World War One. Serbia was one of the most recent, but then they lost Montenegro. This is a joke that Czechia has access to Kaliningrad of Russia.
Russia. Belarus never had it. Maybe the next update, uh, Moldova will finally figure it out. I like maps like this. You could just stare at it for a very long time. It's why they do so good in YouTube shorts. Serbia is actually 2006. Uh, yes, I remember when Czech Republic annexed Kaliningrad. Yeah, when are they going to update? Man, They've we've been waiting for this update for a while to drop in terms of borders in Europe. It's going to be too long. Nice job, next race. What Switzerland isn't innocent, bro. That's actually the serious title here. To invade Switzerland. So Switzerland any has country a central location, giving a strong foothold to um, any invaders. For an instance, this reminded me of how Gaddafi really wanted to end Switzerland. He literally proposed that Germany, France, and Italy divide up that nation. He was really not a Swiss fan. Giving a strong foothold strong to any foothold. invaders. For an instance, if France, Germany, or Italy thought of invading Switzerland, well, they would face severe consequences from the EU yes. and NATO. The Russians won't be interested as Switzerland doesn't have direct alignment with oh. NATO or the EU. But if someone still does invade Switzerland, they would face its geography and yes. then the military. In short, invading Switzerland won't be as easy as you think. Well, yeah, even the no-no Germans knew that. It's like the perfect combination of it's not going to be that easy and also is it really worth it? There's also the diplomatic consequences of doing that. All the other nations of the world are going to be pissed at you. It's just crazy how like this is probably never going to happen. We are never going to see Switzerland get invaded. That's also what I was going to add. Over a quarter of the Swiss people own guns, so they'd have to fight that too. Switzerland is basically designed to be an impenetrable fortress. I mean, it's literally a nation that's just situated inside of the Alps. Like, you can occupy it, but it's gonna be like occupying Afghanistan. I don't want to pretend like it's not possible. Of course, countries can invade and hold Switzerland, but man, I couldn't even imagine the Swiss resistance. I mean, just look at all the bunkers they have. They've been prepared for this for literally hundreds of years. Okay, if you nuke it, that is a whole different thing, though. I will say that. Again, the other key factors is they make sure that it's really just not even worth it. Nice job, InfoHub. Please go subscribe to all the channels. As always, big thanks to my patrons. Month 2. In Drew's basement. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Douche I'm back, boys. I can't Cutter sleep. Cutter Kansas Drew's was voice. mentioned. Amateur archaeology. A fat Norwalk. Carmel West. Frederick. Inquisitor's Zarius. King Bear Hayes. Carino's best girl. Luxembourg. Miglu the Tyrol. Tamron. Mexican 760. Zany boy. If you like your name here, check that link to Patreon down below.